Yeah, you can change it. That's a nice question. How much money does it cost? Uh, <laughs> 10 bucks. Really? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You don't. This isn't. This is this is if you make it provincial. Coach, okay. that's that's me and Jonas. Eh? Yeah. 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 And Matthew. And Matthew. Yeah. Uh, whatever. That's way better than the six hundred. Um. So uh, yeah, curling curling is ten bucks to to be recreational, but to be competitive, <laughs> then you have to pay the athletic fee and you have to pay uh, for busing in order to go to How much is that? and stuff. Honestly, honestly, no. The the athletic fee it. Used to be in the past it was forty dollars, oh. but now the athletic fee is like I don't even know. Boston, how many did you take? I thought you like I thought you like shoved a bunch. I thought I saw you shoved a bunch in your pocket or something. Search them. Got them down. Yeah. Wow. I'm recording. No, I'm oh wow. Um. This is just wow. So. Oh, wow. So curling only costs ten bucks, but then competitive. Oh, I thought it already went to you guys. Oh. <laughs> and you have what you did they pass it to you and you no. pass it straight to them? No. Did Roma get any? Oh no. I'm good. Oh okay. Oh, I'll, have for oh, oh they're going I'll take one for Yeah, I'll take one for later. Yeah. We didn't get any extra one. one. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, Are you seriously one. having another one? I'll share all of these with the class. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> can have one. Grab one extra. Oh, Everybody awesome. can grab one extra. I can grab one. Pass it back here. There's a level of stories. No, it's got to go the other way. Go the other way. Nice catch, Shelby. Yeah. Nice oh. catch, Boston. <laughs> with authority. Yeah, he's just going to be throwing over for it to be a good catch. Yeah. Just pointing that. But yeah. bad throws are good catches are also good. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's bad, throw, bad throws and good catches are, are probably my favorite. Yeah. Wait, we're not going to do much. Oh, no, we're going to do all the work. I'm sure. Cameraman. One more. No, here's our problem. We already lost the class because of uh, the holiday ceremony, right? So, so we can't can can really do another class. What? Is it worth learning? Is it worth learning? Exactly. Do we do we risk do we risk the class average? Yes, we risk the class average. But that doesn't affect your case. Um. Yeah, we're gonna finish these notes and then we're gonna we're probably gonna kind of move on and just a little bit. We should. Yeah, we should. We should. Okay, I asked you to finish two questions, right? I asked you to finish two questions. That was it. So that's what I want us to do right now. What's the only thing this thing's asking you to do? The standard voltage, right? Calculate the electrical potential for the following cell. So, this is a formula that you have to memorize. This is not something that's given in your data booklet. So, the standard cell potential, that's what this means, is the standard cell potential, potential energy, the standard cell potential, for this is always the standard cell potential for the cathode minus the standard cell potential for the anode. Now, when you look at this, which one, which half cell has the cathode in it? Does the copper half cell have the cathode or does the silver half cell have the cathode? <gasps> Alina? Silver. Why the silver? Good. So since our silver ions, since our silver ions are our strongest oxidizing agent, the oxidizing agent reacts at the cathode. So the silver half cell represents our reaction at the cathode. So what is the standard cell potential, the standard reduction potential of that silver uh, half cell? 0 0.80. 0 0.80. 0 0.80. 0 .80. Then we're going to take a look at the anode. This has to be the anode then. Yeah, I don't care. Why you bite your bite like that? What? Why did you not break it? Why did you break it? How do you bite chocolate bars? Well, no, you, you make it. Give me a cake. Just break it. You don't. You, you don't, don't have to break it. Yes, you do. No, you don't. It's a rule. No. Awesome. Awesome. So is this sacrilegious? 
This is the way I eat a Kit Kat. No, 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 that is what this split is for. It's the most economical way. This is no, the most yeah, yeah, this is the most efficient way of getting food into your body. You just eat it. No, or you just have it and You're a psychopath. I am. <laughs> okay. So what is the anode electrical potential? What is that uh, what is that copper electrical potential? 0.34. 0.34. Oh good. What this is saying What this is saying yeah, no, nope, cancel. Is when we look at our cell potential, basically all we care about is what's the difference in voltage between the cathode? The cathode should always be the top one, not always I guess, but the cathode in a voltaic cell typically is the, uh, is the higher one, and then the anode will be the lower one. And so you're always taking this potential, and you're seeing how much higher is this electrical potential than that. That's what you're asking yourself. So I want to compare this electrical potential to that electrical potential. We want to see which one is higher. That's really all you care about by taking the difference between them. So when we do that... I take positive 0 0.8 and I subtract positive 0 0.34 and hopefully if my math works out correctly that is positive 0 0.4446 right. yeah. oh, like oh You can do decimal various mental math <laughs> <laughs> and log Yeah Logs are easy, subtracting decimals are hard So what this is saying is this is saying that this this cell, if you were to make this cell under standard conditions, that's what that little degree sign is, under standard conditions, this cell should create a voltage of 0 0.46 volts. Now, what are standard conditions? Did anybody bother to read that wall of words that was talking about electrical potentials? No. No. SATP. <laughs> SATP. Um, yeah, do you remember what SHP stands for? Standard air temperature. No, not standard air temperature. Space temperature. Standard ambient temperature and pressure. So it's talking about it's talking about basically room temperature, right? So it's saying 25 degrees Celsius, which isn't technically room temperature, but whatever. So it's ambient temperature and pressure. What that means is that if you, if you have any of these reactions, if you have any of these reactions, you want a standard concentration of one mole per liter. You want the temperature to be 25 degrees Celsius. And you, if there are any gases involved in your half reactions, you want those gases to be at, at uh, 100 kilopascal. <laughs> That's the idea, or sorry, 101.325 kilopascals. So, Standard ambient temperature pressure means something very specific. What happens if you don't have one mole per liter? Do you know what's going to happen to the voltage if you don't have one mole per liter? And it's either going to go up or it's going to go down, depending, right? If you have a really, really, really high concentration, your voltage may go up. If you have a really, really low concentration, your voltage may go down. But it depends on which reactant you're talking about. Um, so that's, that's under standard conditions. We're going to do a lab on Monday where we're not using standard conditions. And so the voltage that we get will not be the voltage we expect to get. Does that make sense? Are we good with that? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, perfect. Then I ask you to calculate the standard potential for the following cell. And so the standard cell potential is always, what should you be thinking to yourselves? Cathode. Cathode. <laughs> Minus N. Is it critical for you to identify which one is the cathode and which one is the anode? Yes. Yeah, because if you if you switch them, what's going to happen to your voltage? No. It's going to become negative. <laughs> or if it should have been negative, it's going to become positive, right? 
So what's the strongest, uh, what do you want to talk about first, reducing agent or oxidizing agent? Oxidizing sure, what's the strongest oxidizing agent? Both of those things together are our strongest oxidizing agents. Now, which one of these is going to be our strongest reducing agent? Two plus. The two plus. So what that means is that this carbon is the anode, and this carbon is the cathode. So what we want to do, because how do I know that the oxidizing agent is always paired up with the cathode? Gercoa. Gercoa. Perfect. The only word you have to remember <coughs> in the entire unit. <clears throat> so the oxidizing agent always reacts at the cathode. So if that's our oxidizing agent, then that's going to be our cathode. So we want to take the reaction potential, the reduction potential from the cathode, and subtract the, rea uh, the reduction potential from the anode. So what is the cathode reduction potential here? One point what? Positive 1.23 volts. And we want to subtract from it the Fe2. What's that? 0 0.77. 0.77. So again, this is a positive minus a positive, so that's going to give us a small number or a relatively small number. Let's see if I can do this. 6, 5, no, 4. 0 0.46? Yep. Yeah. There we go. It was a little bit easier. So, positive 0 0.46. So again, under standard conditions, this would produce a voltage of 0 0.46. If we weren't under standard conditions, then we wouldn't get a, uh, a voltage of 0 0.46 volts. Yes? So, um, essentially, I just labeled the carbons like cathode and anode just like at the start. And yep. then once I figured out the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent, I just kind of like put... I like drew arrows from the cathode to the strongest oxidizing. Like, is that a huge deal or? Uh, okay, so you uh, you labeled one of them cathode and anode first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how did you know which one was the cathode and which one was the anode? Or did I didn't. You... I just guessed. And yeah. Then I... Okay, so so the oxidizing agent identifying where which one is the oxidizing yeah. agent will lead you to identifying which one is the cathode. Okay. Because we always label the the electrode that's at the oxidizing agent is the one that we call the cathode. Okay. Because it's accepting electrons. It's the positive electrode. Okay. Perfect. So what I want to think about this, or what I want to say <clears throat> when we look at this, <coughs> is that really the electrical potential, the E cell, is just the difference in how how much further down one half reaction is from another, right? So what would be, how could we get the largest cell potential possible? Lithium and... Lithium what? Lithium, ions, and... Solid. No. Or no, lithium, solid. Fluorine. And fluorine, ions. Yeah. <laughs> lithium solid, so metallic lithium, right? Yeah. Metallic lithium, and then all the way up here, fluorine gas, right? But the problem with that is, is that fluorine gas is so incredibly reactive that, that there, there are very few substances that can actually hold fluorine gas. So we could use lead 2 oxide, and we do use lead 2 oxide in a lot of places. Where do we use it? Car batteries, right? Automotive batteries, because they produce such a large potential. And they have a, a, a large capacity for giving off energy very quickly. Um, somebody asked me yesterday, lithium ion batteries. So why, why, what's the purpose for using lithium ion batteries? Yeah, lithium ion batteries can be turned into lithium metal, right? And that, that's an extremely strong reducing agent. The only problem is you can't have lithium in contact with water because lithium and water will immediately make <coughs> spontaneous reactions. So what you need is you need some sort of a, a different medium to be able to transfer the electrons. That's why lithium ion batteries, I don't know if you've ever seen a video of somebody puncturing a lithium ion battery. Yes, and then watch 
Smarter every day. Oh, man. Because it's Christmas season. Can we watch, um... Can we watch Polar Express? I love Polar Express. That's a Christmas thing. Let's watch Hop. Uh, Sure, sure. Uh, let's try this one. I don't know who ja Chad De 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 Chad DeQuevado is, but whatever. But Chad DeQuevado, we're using your video and putting it up on YouTube. Sorry. Sponsored. Yeah. Copy strike. Copy strike. Copyright strike. Jenna, can you turn off the lights, please? DeQuevado. Okay, so what's what's happening? He's got a lithium ion battery, and he I don't know he, but he strapped a nail to a stick, I guess, or a broom handle. Uh, well, it's I mean it's it's uh, it's it, it's innovative, it's efficient. Okay, let's try this. He's gonna puncture it. Three, two, one. Oh, it's on fire. So why? Why did it do that? What? Yeah, so for the most part, what happened was um, he, so in that lithium ion battery, uh, there's lots of reasons why that happened, but there's, there's going to be repeating layers of cathode anode, cathode anode, cathode anode, cathode anode. And so what he did was, when he punctured them, he made the cathode and anode uh, touch each other, and immediately that sets off a spontaneous reaction. But also, as soon as he punctures it, what, what is he allowing to enter into the battery? Oxygen, oxygen, well, air. air, and what water. does air contain? Water and oxygen. It does contain water, for sure. So air, there's always a little bit of moisture in the air, unless you live in like the Arctic or Antarctic or something. And so um, as soon as he did that, the water comes into contact with the lithium, and the lithium immediately spontaneously reacts. Yeah. How do they make them? How do they make lithium ion batteries? Yeah. That's a really good question, and I'm not educated enough to answer that. Another video. Yeah. Bill Nye. Bill Nye. How do light bulbs work? Vibe check. Vibe check. <laughs> 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 the sound of a car stop. Well, <laughs> that is, that's, I thought it would be from a much more recent year than that. Okay, I'm just going to go back for a second. 11 years ago. <laughs> 11, 11 years ago. Oh, man. All right, let's... Wow, that's oh, by the way, this seems like it's probably propaganda from this company, so anyway. Yeah. They have a giant KitchenAid blender. Perfect. Okay. They misspelled the word capacity. 
So I don't. I I've never seen the manufacturing process of a of a lithium ion battery. I've never seen that. So I I didn't want to comment on it because I didn't want to just kind of start talking BS and start lying to you. So uh, Jenny, can you turn the lights on, please? Sorry, I know I'm making you move off, but okay. So uh, the idea is. We can always get the electrical potential of the entire cell by taking the reduction potential of the cathode and subtracting the reduction potential of the anode. Now, if the cathode, if the, if the reaction at the cathode is higher than the reaction at the anode, we get a large number minus a small number, so we'll get a positive voltage. What's going to happen if the cathode is below the anode? What happens when you take a small number and subtract a bigger number? Yeah, You're going to get a negative voltage. And so let's think about this. If your cathode, right, if your oxidizing agent is above your reducing agent, you're going to get a positive voltage. Would you agree? Yeah. But if your oxidizing agent is below your reducing agent, you're going to get a what? Good. So all of a sudden, we can quantify spontaneous versus non-spontaneous reactions. Spontaneous reactions have what kind of potentials? They, they don't have action potentials. No. They, they're going to have a positive electrical potential. They're going to have a positive voltage. What about non-spontaneous reactions? they're going to have a negative electrical potential or a negative voltage. So if I tell you a cell has a voltage of negative 1.2 volts, what can you immediately tell me about that? that non it's a non-spontaneous yeah. reaction, and you know that that reaction will not go until we apply what kind of a potential to it. So if, if, our, cell, if our cell has an electrical potential... Let's say it's got an electrical potential of negative 1.2 volts. What do you need? Remember, this is non-spontaneous, but we can still force the reaction to go. What do we need to do in order to force this reaction to go? Do we need to pair it up with another reducing agent that's below it? Not, well, kind of. Basically, all we need to do is we need to take some sort of a power source, Ooh. something that can produce electricity, and we need to apply what voltage to force this reaction to go? What do we need to apply to it? We need to apply 1.3 volts in order to force this thing to go. Yeah, so we need to apply a voltage to overcome this voltage. Does that make sense? So there's, there's an electrical potential difference of 1.2 volts that's preventing these things from reacting with each other. As long as we apply a voltage greater than 1.2 volts, we can overcome that electrical potential difference. Yes? So you add those 1.2 volts, are you just sending the electrons the other way? So basically what happens is in a non-spontaneous reaction, uh, so let's think of, let's think of a very specific example. So I'm gonna have copper metal react with magnesium 2 plus ions. And what I want to know, in order to force this to go, what would be the electrical potential of this cell if, the, if these were the two reagents we were trying to force together? So the copper, we want it to turn into copper 2 plus ions. And the magnesium, we want it to turn into magnesium metal. The way I've written the reaction out right now, the way I've written it out right now, which one of these, I'm not saying which one is the strongest oxidizing and strongest reducing agent, but which one of these two things is the oxidizing agent? The Mg2+. The Mg2+, is the oxidizing agent, because it's gaining electrons, right? So this thing is the oxidizing agent, so it will react at the cathode. 
This thing is the reducing agent, so it will react at the anode. So let's take the electrical potential difference of the cathode and the anode. What's the potential difference of the cathode right now? Negative 2.37. And let's subtract the electrical potential difference of the copper. Positive 0.34. So when I do this, when I subtract that, I'm going to get an electrical potential difference of negative 2.71 volts. Okay, so would you agree... Would you agree that this, this is a non-spontaneous reaction? Yes. Yeah, so what's happening is there's an electrical potential, there's a difference in electrical energies that's preventing, it's negative, it's preventing the electrons from going from the copper to the magnesium. So what we could do is if we apply electrical energy in a certain direction, if we apply a voltage that can overcome this hindrance, right? This is preventing it from ha happening. If we can apply a, a voltage greater than this, then we can force those electrons to go from there to there. Does that make sense? Right now, there's an electrical potential difference that's preventing them from being transferred. As long as we have provide more electrical energy than is preventing them, then we can force this to go. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, sir. So what voltage do we have to apply in order to force this to go? 2.72. Yeah, I would say anything 2.71 or greater, because there's a little bit of leeway there. So any, anything 2.71 or greater. As long as, you pro, as long as you provide a voltage like that, um, you should be able to force that reaction to go. A very specific, really, really high probability diploma question that you'll see. Uh, yeah, this is one of Zakowski's questions. So, yeah, uh, I don't have enough creativity to do that, but that's fine. So, <laughs> how many times will you be given an E net? Um, sorry, many times you'll be given an E net and only one of the half reactions. So you'll be asked to get not the E nets of the other cell, but you have to get the E either anode or cathode of the other cell. So, WTF just stands for what the Somebody, yeah, yeah, I just heard, so maybe I was incorrect. Maybe it stands for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't know. Where's the food? Where's yeah, the food? Oh, that's so much better. I, I think not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think not. Okay, all right. So, we know that the electrical potential energy of the cell is 0 0.95 volts. Now what I want to ask you is what does this mean? Is, is this spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Spontaneous. So what's, what's higher? Is the cathode higher or is the anode higher? The cathode has to be higher. How much higher is the cathode compared to the anode? 0 0.95 volts. That's what that measures. The E, the electrical potential of the cell, is always a measure of how much higher is the cathode versus the anode. So if you know where either the cathode is or the anode, you know the other one is either 0 0.95 above it or 0 0.95 below it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what do you know for sure? Have you ever seen WTF before? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But you've never seen it, and it's not on your table of uh, reduction potentials. What is on your table of reduction potentials? Nickel. Nickel is. And so what I want to think about... Ni2 plus plus two electrons turning into Ni solid. What's the reduction potential of this half reaction? Negative 0 0.26, right? So the, the E naught is negative 0 0.26. 
Does this represent the cathode or does it represent the anode? Are you sure? It's gaining electrons, right? So this is this is being reduced, and reduction occurs at the cathode, right? So this is the cathode. What do you know about the anode? Does the anode have to be above or below this? Below. Has to be below. How much further below does it have to be? So how much would it be if it was this much below that? Negative one. I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Do you need a calculator? Every Seven, two, plus zero point six <laughs> negative, it should be negative 1.21, right? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's using your intuition. That's us thinking, okay, it's spontaneous, so the cathode has to be higher than the anode. And we're looking for the anode, so it's this much lower than the cathode, right? That's, that's using our intuition. But we could also, we could just use math. If, if you don't like intuition, if that's not kind of your thing, then you can just write out an equation. Whoa, that's terrible. So do we know the electrical potential of the cell? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's 0 0.95. Do we know the electrical potential of the cathode? No. Yes. yes. This is the cathode because it's a reduction half reaction, and reduction half reactions occur at the cathode. So it's negative 0 0.26. And now, all you have to do is rearrange for the anode. It, and it doesn't matter which method you do. You can use intuition and just think about it logically. Or you can use this equation, this equation that we've been using now for a day. So how would I rearrange this for E anode? This is probably actually harder than using your intuition. <laughs> so you'd, you'd add what? 0 0.26. Okay, so I'd add 0 0.26 to both sides. So you just make that circle. So now 1.21 volts is equal to negative E anode times negative 1. So times negative 1 or divide by negative 1. So E anode is negative 1.21 volts. Does that make sense? Which, which method do you like better, using just your intuition or do you like using math? Intuition. Okay, some people like intuition, some people like math. If it were me, if it were me I would always write this down. Always, always, always. Just because it's this is a, in my mind because I'm an idiot. This becomes idiot proof. Um, so that's why. You're not an idiot. I'm kind of an idiot sometimes. Uh, very simple details sometimes when I'm looking at problems. I go through too fast. Yeah, I know. And we're all kind of idiots. So wow. It's all good. Whoa, sorry. I didn't read. Speech on YouTube. Uh, I would like you to try this for me, please. Oh, hey, demonetize. 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 Should I monetize these videos? Sure. You can. Yeah, I know I can. <laughs> Until you get like 10,000 views, make like 900. Oh, do you? Yeah, you do. Oh, I didn't realize that. Are you joining Team Trees? No, I'm not joining Team Trees. Nope. But I probably, I probably should still need 20 bucks. Yeah, that's what? 20 trees in your name. Am I what? Am I going to clean up the oceans? I should. How do I do that? You don't have to touch the Oh. <laughs> Check. Yeah? Done. Did you buy a metal straw? No, I didn't, but I don't use straws. Must you use a pocket Yeah. What? <laughs> Okay, two discussions. Try this out. Try this out. Yeah, I have many more shows. I've never had one. Oh, that's right. What is the
Why is there a potato chip in the pumpkin? I was taking the This was my first time to eat for Really? No, big No, there's definitely some down here, like here. Good. This is coming in handy. Yeah, perfect. I think it's a. What? No, I should go to a physio though. Um, curling. Yeah, I I've I've started to notice this year. I've only been curling like five times this year, but uh, I've started to notice that my knee that's in my in my delivery position, I put a lot of strain on my knee. And I've started to notice that every time after the game, it's starting to tighten up. And so I probably should start going to the same area. That's, that's why I'm supposed to stretch. But I'm the skip. I hold the broom. I don't do anything physical. So I usually just don't worry about stretching. Because it's not like I can pull a muscle and you know, put my arm up. Skip still sweeps a little bit. I'm being facetious, but that's fine. Facetious. Facetious. Yeah. very facetious. Um, okay, let's try this. Which side is the anode and which side is the cathode? So the cathode's on the right and the anode's on the left, right? Anode, cathode. How do you, how do we know, I mean, how, how do we know the one on the left is the anode? Uh, okay. Yeah. I okay. I I would agree with that for the most part. You're taking a solid and you're turning it into some other. More importantly, we see the cathode is forming, and if we think of Gurkhala, we can. Okay. Let's start there. What side is gaining an electron? The right side is gaining an electron. Right. The left side is losing an electron. So the cathode always exists on the side that's gaining electrons, right? So this is the cathode and this is the anode. Perfect. What do we know the entire cell potential is? What's three volts? Positive three volts. So what that means, what, what, sorry, what does that mean? What does it mean to have a, a, a voltage of positive three volts? That means the cathode minus anode. Yes, so that means the cathode is three volts higher than the anode, right? And so when we look at the cathode, it needs to be three volts higher than the anode. Do we know either one of these? Yeah, we know lithium. What is the voltage for the lithium half reaction? Negative 3.04. So if we just use our intuition, right? If we have a positive voltage of three, then that means the cathode has to be three volts higher than the anode. No. <laughs> so this is why, and this is why I always want to use that formula, personally speaking, okay? So the way I would do this, E naught cell is E cathode minus E anode. And so I'll go three volts. We don't know the cathode, but we do know the anode is negative 3.04 volts. This is where. This is where a lot of people get screwed up. Why? Why is this where a lot, is a lot of people get screwed up? Probably, probably a lot of people when they write out this equation. Probably a lot of people when they write out this equation, they're just going to say E cathode minus E anode. And then they're going to add, and they're going to get positive 6.04. But it's, it's minus whatever your anode potential is. So you have to go minus negative. So that's adding a positive. So we can subtract 3.04 from both sides. 
and we will get negative 0.04 volts is our cathode potential. Are we okay with that? Yes. Jonas. Go ahead. Can I get you to do some of these questions, please? Yeah, go ahead. You have tons of room on the last slide, right? What? No, you have to do these questions. All of them? Yeah. All of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. That's why um, it's it's for it's a formative assessment. I don't I don't know, you tell me, is a formative assessment for marks? No. A summative assessment is for marks, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard those terms before? No. Really? It's a guess. Oh, okay. Um, I was just because I, I know that a lot of teachers in some other schools have used those terms before, so I was just uh, if I ever get work, I just have to ask if it's permitted. Yes, yeah, that's right. So talk talk to Turner next time and say, I don't know. Did you guys talk to Hunter? Hunter, oh, oh no, okay. yeah. Hunter, sorry. Turner. I don't know. So talk to Mr. Turner. Talk to Hunter. And uh, and ask him if it's for if is this a formative assessment or is this a summative assessment? I just do. <laughs> you just don't do them at all. Yeah. Well, and most of them that explains it. He tells us. Okay. If it's for marks. Oh, okay. Is this for marks? No. I haven't decided yet. And if we need this, just do it. You this is not for marks. Just do it. Because we can't just rip this out. We need it for our use. No. What does it have to be? What does it have to be filled with? Oh, any oh, oh. Positive and negative ions. Uh, has to be filled with positive and negative ions. So an ionic compound. <laughs> but you don't want the ionic compound to be what? Oh, yeah. yeah. To yeah. have a spontaneous yeah. reaction with it. That's my nitrate. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's acidic nitrate sometimes. Right, that's pretty high up. But I mean if you add acid, you just wouldn't have nitrate. That's Probably from the rotting pumpkin up on my desk. What's the apple doing? Gross, man. What? Is the apple Oh yeah, they're gone now. They're gone. It's blooming. What do I mean they're gone? They're gone. In people's, well, not in their stomachs. Anymore. People ate them all. People ate them all. Really? We had like one. Yeah. Sorry, dog. I had zero. Sorry, dog. 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 Sorry, Hey, I want you to do this totally silently for 10 minutes. Uh, no, totally silently, you're not allowed to ask any questions. Why are you doing all of them? Doing all the questions. Did I? Um, my mom. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that's an easy question. I was just trying to figure out how to work. That's fair. Yeah? Both equally. Yeah, right. No, I
complicated question. going to take a couple more minutes and then we're going to run through these questions together. <laughs> That's right. We can kind of do this a little bit, but we'll <laughs> a little bit. But, what? What do they teach you about in Star Wars? I would like to talk about these, and I know that you haven't probably been given a, um, enough time to really honestly answer all of them, but we're, I'm just, I just want to make sure we get through all of this stuff before the end of class. You're not going to have any homework today, so that's fine. <clears throat> so, uh, question number three says, indicate whether or not the following processes occur at the cathode and the anode, and so the reduction half reaction, what do you think? Cathode. Cathode, how do you know? Gurkoa, because we we define the cathode as accepting electrons, right? It's the positive electrode. So the cathode is positive, it must be accepting electrons, that will be the reduction half reaction. So the cathode, oxidation half reaction has to be obviously the anode then. The reaction of the strongest reducing agent, what's that? Anode, and then strongest cathode. Good, Kate. What are the characteristics of a solution in a salt bridge? Provide an example. So your most people's examples is probably going to be what? NaNO3, sodium nitrate, right? Sodium nitrate. And we want to think about okay, why why does it have to be sodium nitrate? What's one thing that the salt bridge has to be able to do? Conduct electricity. So it must 
absolutely must contain ions, right? It has to contain charges. Because moving charges is what electricity is. So as long as those charges have the ability to move, then we should be fine. No problem. Does this contain ions in it? Yep, positive ions, so sodium ions and nitrate ions, which are negative. Now, nitrate and sodium, by themselves, are nitrate ions really, really reactive? Do you see nitrate ions at, like just by themselves on this, on this sheet? No, they shouldn't be on the table of half reactions. What about sodium ions? Are sodium ions on here? Yeah, they are, but they're so far down the list that it's going to be really hard for them to be reactive. So that's why we use sodium and nitrate. Often, it's because they're so unreactive, we just don't have to worry about them. Question number six, for each of the following cells, uses a given cell notation to identify the strongest oxidizing reducing agents. Reducing agents. Uh, um, uh, write chemical equations to represent the cathode, anode, and S-cell reactions. Draw a diagram of cell labeling the electrodes, electrolyte, direction of electron flow, and the direction of ion movement. Holy guacamole, let's do this really quick. So we're going to have... That's terrible, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So in here, let's call this zinc and zinc ions. Let's call this silver and silver ions. We need a salt bridge, and we need wires to connect them. So the salt bridge is going to have sodium nitrate in it. That's totally fine. Are, you, are we done? Yeah. Oh, boy. We're just talking about these questions. Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which one of these? Oh. Yeah. Which one of these is going to be the anode and which one's the cathode? The cathode on the right. So the zinc is the anode. Good. So this is our anode. And this is our cathode. Are we getting good at recognizing which one is the anode and the cathode? Is it getting? No, it's not always on the right. It's not always on the right. Calm down. It's not always on the right. Uh, please don't just assume it's on the right. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that. Okay. Um, the silver ion is our strongest oxidizing agent. The zinc metal is our strongest reducing agent. And so when, when, we, when we write our reactions, silver is gonna gain an electron to turn into silver solid. Sorry, I should always have states of matter. I'm bad for that. And zinc solid is gonna give up two electrons and turn into zinc two plus ions. And then I'm not gonna write it, but what's the net reaction? How many silver ions and how many zincs do we need? Two silvers. Two silvers for every zinc, right? So that's that's pretty straightforward. What was there anything else in that question we had to answer? Draw a diagram, label the electrodes, electro the electrolyte, the direction of the electron flow. Good. Where do the electrons go? The cathode. They go to the cathode all the time, right? So they always and again your half reactions will tell you. The silver is gaining electrons, so the electrons have to be being transferred to the cathode. Now, which, which ions go towards the cathode? Do the cations or the anions go towards the cathode? The cations go towards the cathode. The cations always will go to the cathode. The cations go towards the cathode. And the reason why I know that, the reason why I know that is because on the left-hand side, boss it, max, on the left-hand side, max. On the left-hand side, are we making more positive ions or are we using up positive ions? We're using, well, actually, we're making more. So do positive ions want to go there or do they want to go away from there? They want to go away from there, right? So our positive ions want to go away from there, and our negative ions want to go towards there through the salt bridge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, OK. All right. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's it for the first one. Then in the next one, we've got aluminum and then the acidic nitrate. I'm not going to draw it. 
But which side is the cathode and which side is the anode? <laughs> Right. 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 I know the right always. side's the cathode, I get that, but it's not always going to be like that. Um, using, okay, I will be honest, I will be totally honest, using cell notation, cell notation should be anode on the left, left cathode on the right. So if they're using cell notation, it should be like that. But please, for the love of God, don't just assume that on the diploma or the unit exam. Are we okay with that? Yes. Okay, good. Are you going to purposely change it now? I, I, I am very much debating whether or not I should. Yeah. Uh, okay, acidic nitrate is your strongest oxidizing agent. That means the platinum is your cathode. Aluminum ions, nothing. Aluminum is your uh, strongest reducing agent. That means it's your anode. You have electrons going from the anode to the cathode. The positive ions are going towards the cathode. The negative ions are going towards the anode. Sure, no problem. Let's get to question seven now. This is a good one. In what direction on do cations move? And this goes back to what we said. Where do cations always go? Towards the cathode. Why? But why are they going towards the cathode? Because what? What, Joe? Is it making more or is it using them up? It's using them up, right? So you have an absence of positive ions on the right hand side. And you have an excess of positive ions. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the, the positive ions are moving away from the excess positive charge over here and towards the, the, the negative charge on the other side. And same thing for the, the anions, they're moving the opposite way then. Uh, why do ions move? Yeah, we're not going to take our answer and convert it into another why question, that's fine. <laughs> okay, for the copper-silver uh, cell below, you don't have this, I just, I just put it in here. Awesome, porous plug. <laughs> yeah, the porous plug, it's just, yeah, whatever. It's just making, making sure that these, it's just making sure that these things can't mix together, that's all. So let's think about this. Why is this solution blue? Because it's what? <laughs> it's got copper ions in it, right? Can I get you to go to the very last page that actually has information in your data book? It's not the one that says notes dot 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 dot. Page 11, right? Yes. Yep. So let's take a look at this. What solution color should the copper be? At, at what concentration should it be blue-green? Sorry, the uh, copper, what, what, sorry, what kind of copper ions do we have? We have copper too, so it should be blue, right? And then when it's, when it's a low concentration, if it's not concentrated, if it's kind of dilute, what color would it be? Pale blue. Pale blue. So let's think about this. When, uh, when we take a look at our cell, here, are we making, because this copper is the oxidation reaction, are we making more copper ions or are we using up copper ions? Here it looks like it looks like the um, the silver is the cathode, so we're turning the ions into uh, metal. Here we're turning the metal into ions. So what's happening is every single time we make another ion, every single time we make another ion, the solution gets a little bit more blue. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what this this should go from like pale blue to more blue to even more blue. But what's going to happen? Those positive sodium ions are heading through the salt tube towards the silver cathode. Would you agree? <coughs> the cations are heading towards the cathode. So what that means, let's say we had a positive ion here, and let's say we had another positive ion here, and let's say we had another positive ion here. When this positive ion moves this way, what's going to come and fill its place? Another positive ion. So what's going to come fill its place? Another positive ion. So what's going to fill its place? Another positive ion. And so this Cu2 plus, what, where is it slowly starting to go? 
It's slowly starting to move into the salt bridge and all the way eventually where will it go? It will actually end up migrating all the way into the other cell. Is, does that make sense? So the question is asking, the question is asking oops, on the previous page, oops. for the copper silver cell shown in figure three, but it's the same thing. We know that sodium ions move to the, the silver, to the cathode. Explain the evidence that the blue color, why is the blue color moving up the salt bridge here? Because copper. Because the copper ions, are, they're positive ions, and they're just following the flow of the positive ions, right? They're following the flow of those, of those cations. All the cations are slowly making their way over there, so eventually the blue color will end up making its way up there. What I want to, I just want to, I've got, I own three and a half minutes of your life still, so I'm going to do one more thing. Yeah, how dare I? Um, let's think about this, yeah. You don't have to draw anything, I will draw it. you to really, really quickly do, take a look, which side is the cathode and which side is the anode. <laughs> hey, so the left is the cathode, not because I'm, not, not because I'm trying intentionally to, to be a jerk, but because I'm trying to be a jerk. Hey, um, so this side is the cathode because it's got the strongest oxidizing agent, right? This side is the, uh, the uh, anode because it's got the strongest reducing agent. Okay, what's happening? Let's take a look at the strongest reducing agent side. What's the reaction that's going on here? Nickel is turning into electrons. Nickel solid is turning into nickel two plus plus two electrons. What's going to happen to the color of this solution? Uh, is it going to get darker or lighter? Darker, lighter. What color are nickel ions? Blue green. Nickel ions are blue green when they're really concentrated and pale blue green when they're less concentrated. So what's going to happen? Are, is this side, is this solution going to get darker in color or lighter in color? Lighter in color. What are we making? We're making more nickel ions. Every single time a nickel ion pops into a solution, it gets a bit darker, right? No, because we're making, we're producing more nickel ions, and the more nickel ions you have, the darker the solution is going to get. Are we okay with that? Okay. Yeah, 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 they will eventually. Right? But but this solution will get darker and darker and darker. <laughs> the camera. And, and slowly the solution the nickel ions will make their way up the YouTube. But that side will get more constant.